Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate 3 with me, Bring It On. Let's return to camp and speak to and about Will. We'll see how the other companions feel first, and then speak to the Blade of Frontiers himself. The Blade of Frontiers. Let's hope Will lives up to his name. We'll need all the help we can get. So, we're traveling with the famed Blade of Frontiers. I feel safer already. The Githyanki people have a word for men like the Blade of Frontiers. Shalak. Roughly translated, idealist do-gooder. Or better yet, benevolent burden. His confidence is an asset. His pursuit of valor, not so much. Are you sure Crash is our only path to a cure? Entirely. I was as devoted to my studies as I was to my training. Each Crash contains a Sathisk purification device. So I learned from the writings in the Kaleer Library. The library was a gift from Vlakith herself, that we may gain total understanding. That kind of wisdom is very valuable, if it's true. Countless scholars roam the astral sea and beyond, observing the ways of our lessers, exploring planes so distant order turns to chaos and cold fires rage. The planes are ever quaking and their peoples ever shifting. The Githyanki possess an eternity of knowledge, yet we still collect more. Infinities upon infinities. I've known a few warlocks in my time. Talented, of course, though sometimes too eager to listen to the devils on their shoulders. <laughs> Comes with the territory, unfortunately. All right, speak to Will himself. The Blade of Frontiers at your calling. Uh, option four is probably the most pressing issue. I don't suppose you've come across an expert healer in your travels. <laughs> I've come to know a fair few village clerics, but none with the skill to pull these worms from our heads. From what I understand, there's a healer called Nettie in the Grove. Perhaps she's got the talent. We should pay her a visit. How does the Blade of Frontiers end up chasing a devil in the hills? Karlak's fires raged in Baldur's Gate before she escaped to Avernus, as my source told it. And she was planning to return. One of the archdevil Zariel's own. Chaos incarnate, a devil with pure fire for a heart. I made my way to Avernus to stop her. She fled from my reach, even climbed aboard the Mind Flayer ship as it screeched through the hells. I followed in close pursuit. I can't bear to imagine the lives Karlak might be taking. The damage she might be doing. Interesting that I can question his source. Which means it's probably the devil on his shoulder. Who is this source of yours? A powerful friend with a keen interest in... Privacy. I'm sworn to say no more. Yeah, I think that all but confirms it. Uh, let's move on to other matters. All right. What else is on your mind? Tell me, Will. How did you come to be the Blade of Frontiers? My father once said, One does not pursue a champion's life. One merely answers its call. So it was for me. I was hunting near the Cloakwood when I heard it. A child crying out from a lone farmstead. I found him in the fields, flanked by goblins. His mother's corpse bled into the soil next to him. I don't remember much of the battle, but I remember drying the boy's tears after. What act could be finer than saving a life? 
You must have felt proud. Proud? No. Angry. Angry at the monsters preying on innocence. Angry at the so-called good gods for tolerating the cruelty of the evil. Angry at myself that it took so long for me to see the coast suffering. The frontiers demanded a blade. And so I heeded. Okay, that explains why he's a warlock. And before that... Baldur's Gate, born and raised. The only son of a single father. He wanted one life for me. I chose another. We haven't spoken since I left the city. A classic drama. <laughs> a staunch father and his rebellious son. Better heard from the bard's lips than mine. I've noticed your stone eye. Did you lose it in battle? A most vicious one, in fact. It's made from pure bloodstone. Carved from the Galena Mountains just north of the Moon Sea. A reminder that sometimes blood must be shed and sacrifices must be made. Ah, but that story is reserved for lifetime friends and calmer days. I'd like to talk about something else. By all means. What else is on your mind? Alright, we'll swap out Lazel for Will. Chuck, be wary of false promises. The missing druid, Halsin, was it? He may be talented, but only a Githyanki Zathis can cleanse an embedded tadpole. Wait for me in camp. Chuck, you believe you can survive without me? I managed just fine until we had to rescue you, if you don't remember. I'm not arguing. Remain here. As you say, do not keep me waiting. Well met. I'd like you to join me. That's the spirit. Alright, so we level up Will. Plus, we just did the first part of Lazel's quest. So, we will swap back to her once we spot that patrol. Or get closer to it. Let's take a look at Will. He's a human, we've read that already. He's a warlock. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. And the Fiend. Warlocks in service to fiends work towards corrupting destructive ends, intentionally or otherwise, or receive hellish blessings in turn. That is very interesting considering his character. I think his is going to be an interesting story. All right, decent stat spread. I don't like how weak he is, but we can always make up for that. Uh, Civil Militia, we've seen that before. Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points, this gift from your patron grants you four temporary hit points. Human Versatility, an Opportunity Attack. Right, so you wear light armor. Will's underwear. Long may these gird the Blade of Frontiers. <laughs> and Will's earthy garb. In his good-humored performativity, Will could not resist a puff of perfume on these clothes. I'm gonna butcher this. A uh, possibly you do Frontiers? Not sure if I said that right. But cool. Alright, let's level him up. Well, let's see what he has here first. A Blade Ward. Take only half the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. Lasts for two turns. Armor of Agathis. Gain five temporary hit points and deal five cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack. Until long rest. Arms of Adar. Friends target from using reactions, does 2d6 necrotic damage, and on save, targets still take half damage but are able to use reactions. An Eldritch Blast. Get your one beam of crackling energy, does 1d10 force damage. Alright, let's level up. Alright, seven hit points. 
Warlock spell slot gained. You gain a Warlock spell slot. What do we have? So we've seen Burning Hands, Charm Person, Command, Expeditious Retreat. Have we seen Hellish Rebuke? I feel like we have. I react to your next attack with flames that deal 2 to fire, two to 20 fire damage. On save, target still takes half damage. X is new. Make your attacks deal an additional 1 to 6 necrotic damage uh, to the target and give it disadvantage on an ability of your choosing. If the target dies before the spell ends, you can hex a new creature without expending a spell slot. A protection from evil and good, and Witch Bolt. Hex seems pretty good. And Eldritch Invocations. In your study of occult lore, give unearthed Eldritch Invocations, fragments of forbidden knowledge that imbue you with an abiding magical prowess. Agonizing Blast. When you cast Eldritch Blast, add your Charisma modifier to the damage it deals, unless it is negative. That's plus three damage. That's pretty good. Armor of Shadows. You cast Mage Armor on yourself at will without expending a spell slot. Mage Armor increases your armor class when you aren't wearing armor. That would be very tempting, but he has Light Armor Proficiency. And Mage Armor doesn't give you any special effects. But you can find unique Light Armor that does give you a unique effect, right? So, very tempting, but I think we're better not to take it. A Beast Speech. You can speak with animals at will without expending a spell slot. That'll be very good utility because right now we just have the one potion that I've already used. And once we do another long rest, that's gone. A Beguiling Influence. You invoke your patron's bewitching charm. You gain proficiency in deception and persuasion. Which is pretty solid. He has 17 charisma. A Devil's Sight. You can normally see in darkness both magical and non-magical to a distance of 80 feet. That's pretty good, because as a human, Will does not get Dark Sight. So he should be in melee most of the time. At least that's how he seems to be built. But he also has Eldritch Blast, so if you do Double Sight and Agonizing Blast, that's a pretty solid combo. A Fiendish Vigor. You can cast False Life on yourself at will as a level 1 spell without expending a spell slot. False Life grants you 7 temporary hit points. Mask of Many Faces. You can cast Disguise Self at will without expending a spell slot. One with Shadows. You learn how to cast One with Shadows. Which does what? Vanish into the darkness and become invisible as long as you stand still. Invisibility ends early if you move, attack, cast another spell, take an action, or take damage. Repelling Blast. When you hit a creature with Eldritch Blast, you can push the creature up to 15 feet away from you. Also seems pretty good. And Thief of Five Fates. Once per long rest, you can cast Bane using a Warlock spell slot. Bane targets up to three creatures. They receive a 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. It's a pretty tough call. We can always respec him later. I'm going to go with Beast Speech for now. And Agonizing Blast. I don't know if we get more invocations later on. If it's like every two level ups or what the case may be. Because I do want Devil's Sight as well. And Repelling Blast. You can also replace the spell if you want to. I'm pretty happy with what he currently has, so I'm not going to bother with that. Alright, seven more hit points, and... Improved Warlock spells. Uh, most of your Warlock spells have become stronger. We can select a new spell. Uh, blindness, Cloud of Daggers, Crown of Madness, Darkness, and Thrall. Reduce a creature's peripheral vision and make it look at you. Old person, invisibility, mirror image, misty step would also be good. 
A uh, Raven Feeblement, Scorching Ray, Shatter. Tough call between Mirror Image and Misty Step. I'm going to go with Misty Step just because it's a bonus action. But I do want Mirror Image at some point for the uh, added defense. Alright, Impact Boon. Your patron bestows a gift upon you for your loyal service. Choose one of the following packs. It's a Pact of the Chain. In the service of a familiar, a face spirit that takes a form of your choosing. This can be an animal, imp, or quasit. Pact of the Blade. You can summon a packed weapon or bind the one you are wielding, making it magical. Packed weapons use the wielder's spellcasting ability modifier instead of strength or dexterity, which is his 17 charisma here. And Pact of the Tome. Your patron grants you a grimoire called the Book of Shadows, which allows you to cast Guidance, Vicious Mockery, and Thorn Whip. I mean, Guidance would be useful, but we have Shadowheart. And it's very unlikely that I take the Cleric out of our party. So, I think based on what we know of Will so far, Pact of the Blade makes the most sense. Which gives him Pact of the Blade. Summon a weapon to your hand. It uses the Wielder's Spellcasting Ability modifier, and its damage is magical. You're proficient with the weapon. You only have one at a time. The weapon disappears if you're more than five feet away from it for more than ten rounds. So if you throw it, I guess. And bind packed weapon. Bind uh, to your main hand weapon. Its damage becomes magical. You cannot drop or throw it. And you become proficient with it if you weren't already. Oh, that's cool. So you can use any weapon he wants. You only have one packed weapon at any time. Uh, the weapon returns to its previous state if you're more than five feet away from it for more than ten rounds. Well, that's awesome. Uh, so let's go ahead and rearrange this stuff. I just noticed that the ladder has health. So in future fights, we could probably destroy ladders to prevent enemies from getting to us easily. So we have this. Let's give this a shot. Yeah. Oh cool, so Shadowheart comes through automatically because she can fit. It's awesome. Alright, we'll take a look around before we go speak to the Tieflings. Oh man. I was gonna use Shadow Heart to boost my main character's strength so he could jump across this, because he's pretty close. These boots have seen everything. Oh neat, okay. Oh, that's where this guy disappeared to earlier. If we left, we could at least make a run for it. What now? Hello? 
His eyes flicker to yours for an instant, then away, as if it hurts to look at you. Alright, what do we have to get across this? Keep a blade close. Works for me. Have to keep going. Never a dull moment. Steve Stash. Let's read the books before we speak to the children here. Uh, the Guild, Hidden Rulers of Baldur's Gate. The book's central argument is encapsulated in a chapter devoted to Real Surreal, Guild Kingpin of Little Kalimshan. I think it's Kalimshan. In another time and another place, Rosa Rail would be celebrated as a revolutionary. At Baldur's Gate in her own lifetime, she's known as a crime lord, a kingpin of the guild ruling over the city within a city as the district of Little Kalimshan. Rosa's story began when she was orphaned at a young age. Her father was hanged by the flaming fists for sheltering his fugitive brother. Soon after, her mother was denounced by the jealous wife of a patriarch in a prison in the sea tower where she perished. Alone in the world, she learned two valuable lessons. When the law is corrupt, it is a necessity for those without the support of its enforcers to act outside it. And when the law is brutal, it is an ethical duty to act against it. Operating from within the Kaleem Jewel Emporium, Rosa knows the value of everything and everyone that moves through Baldur's Gate. She controls a wide network of agents who observe and track the exchange of goods and information as closely as any merchant or politician. But secondhand knowledge is cheap. Rosa's real trick is to draw those with secrets to share directly into her orbit. At her Garden of Whispers, information can be shared with the guild anonymously. Anyone with a grudge to bear or competitor to bring low, that is to say anyone of importance, can ensure that the whole city knows their grievance. It is said that if somebody speaks of your weak spot in the Garden at dawn, you can expect to find a knife buried in that exact spot before night falls. Labels of Faerun 3, The Enticing Elder. There are once two sisters, one a great fighter and one a great cleric, who longed for new adventure. I shall skewer an elder brain upon my sword, cried the fighter, to the Underdark. I wish to know the secrets of the brain's power, said the cleric. Let us be off. In the recesses of the deep, the sisters slew darklings and darrow, bugbears and bullets. The two reached an illithid colony when the fourth to ten day passed. 
the quest would soon be complete. With great oh, effort, they felled a half dozen mind flayers and soon reached the Elder Brain's lair. It rose from the brine pool at the center of its chamber, flanked by illithids. The brain didn't speak aloud, but the sisters could hear it in their minds. I am called Chaos. Why have you come? I'll make your powers my own, called the cleric. I will crush you and bring an end to your tyranny, said the fighter. The brain hovered in silence. A moment later, a burst of psionic energy shook the chamber, and the sisters lay dead. Good luck, Chaos replied. The illithids feasted heartily that day. That was an abrupt ending. You don't look so tough. Mull thought of a hobgoblin all by herself. Give Mull a ten day and she'll own Boulder's Gate. You'll see. Whatever you say. You're blocking my light. Oh, I remember you. You're the one who helped me get away. You want something? Were you just here to stare at my forehead? Tell me the truth. That adventurous locket. Do you have it? Look, if I had it, would I tell you? This entire conversation is a waste of our time, don't you think? Now find yourself a maze and get lost. I'm busy. Pockets to pick. Moss says you're alright. Doesn't mean I gotta talk to you. Oh, there's Mole. And Sylphie. Oh. Hello again. Um. Mole's in charge here, not me. We're going to own that. Well, look who's come to visit. My kids say you've been busy since you got here. I heard you help Melly with that locket. I owe you for that. And thanks for going easy on Sylphie. Not many marks would have done the same. Why are you running all these schemes and swindles? Risky, you know. We're saving up for a better hideout when we get to Boulder's Gate. Why? You planning on telling me stealing is wrong? Yes. You're taking advantage during bad times. There are words for folk like that. So what? Should we be panicking like everyone else? We have a plan. We're the ones who'll end up on top in the gate. Anything else? Thought you might need help with something. I do, as a matter of fact. Revenge. I want to steal that big, shiny idol they're all chanting at. An idol? What do you do with something like that? The important thing is to get it away from them. That ritual's gonna get us all killed. And we can sell it once we get to the city. Thing like that's gotta be worth a small fortune. So stealing is wrong, and not something my paladin would normally partake in, but I think stopping that ritual is, as far as we understand it right now, the good thing to do. So I'll see what I can do. Be careful. They look as brittle as old bark, but they're vicious. Anything else? Do you have anything to trade? Ooh, animate dead. That's right, Astarian has all this junk I made him pick up. Hey. 
anything else. You've been a friend to us. Come back any time. Not long until we leave. I had a feeling you'd be back. You've been a friend to us. Come back any time. Alright, let's see what they have in their stash over here. Shall we? I think that's the guy's locket. I'm not going to take their blocks. That would be going a little too far. Also, we'll take their teddy bear. Yeah. What does that say? Slightly tarnished and open with a mere flick of the thumb. So I was thinking we'd have to pickpocket it from Melly, but that seems to not be the case. Still breathing, despite everything. I think we spoke to all the kids down here. Melly, Zaki, Ol. Selfie. So minus five attitude with Astarian is did they catch him stealing? I need me to catch a break. Let's go back and talk to her. I want to see if uh we lost any reputation. I mean I say minus five with a Starion, but I wanna see if they greet me any differently. I had a feeling you'd be back. You've been a friend to us. Okay. Well, let's see if we can return this locket to that guy. I believe it was the Barth guy. Until Roland shows off his thunder wave. Depends. How many people are dumb enough to ask? <laughs> True. That kid stole the one thing that means anything to me. Got nothing to say to you. You got nothing I want. I beg to differ. Here's the locket. It's all yours. You found it. I don't know what to say. I know it's stupid. It's all I have of her is all. Kind of you, friend. Here's something for your troubles. Was it gold? So what does he have? Heirloom, is it? Been in your family long? Not long, matter of fact. Burn them. Not much of an heirloom then. Mm. Unless there's a tail behind it, maybe. We're exposed now. Nice. <laughs> she stole it from a house she cleaned. All right. They didn't pay her much. They owed her a perk or two. Hey, you know what? It's none of my p concern. I mean, it's already stolen, right? Wherever it came from, at least it's something to remember her by. Yeah. Thanks to you. Anyway. I should go. See you around. We don't know what happened to her either. Did they break up? Did she die? We'll the You're alright by me, friend. 
can't believe the kid thought he could snatch my mum's locket and get away with it. Oh, okay, it's mum. <laughs> Bet he's learned his lesson now. Why would I ask for it? Uh, speaking of the locket, I have it. You best be joking. Tell me you are, and this doesn't have to end in blood. <laughs> yeah, I was just messing, man. Uh, you're right. I'm joking. Thought so. <laughs> you're all right by me. All right. Well, good. On Can't believe. We're still on good terms. <laughs> Bet he's learned his lesson. Oh, to my fate. Okay. Fine. Fine. How long until Roland shows off his thunder wave? Oh, the store's open now. Depends. How many people are dumb enough to ask? <laughs> it wasn't open before. I don't True. know if it was locked or not, because I think it's too far away to check to see its status. Oh, what's going on in here? You ain't gonna shoot me. Your hands are shaking. Put it down. She can't fight back. That's the point. Get out of the way. She didn't kill your brother, Arca. You're better than this. Shoot before you lose your nerve, Tieflin. If you ever had it to begin with. The Scalpin is in need of judgment. I should decide her fate. I didn't ask for you to say a damn thing! Keep out of it! Step between the crossbow and the goblin. They said Gale approves. Looks like the Absolute sent me a protector. You're gonna kill him too? You move! So it is cool that companions that aren't in your party also get approval and disapproval when they're at camp. This one avenge cannon. It won't change anything. You're right. I wish you weren't. I really do. Damn you. Damn it! Why do you care if a goblin lives or dies? Uh, two really good options here. Option three and four. Because vengeance eats people alive. You'll grant the goblins two victories this day. You'd better be right. It's alright, Arca. Let's go. I didn't get to You're see... You're gonna be sorry! Every last one of ya! I can't see who approved and disapproved there. I think it said Will disapproves. But I think someone else approved. I wasn't... I didn't read it in time. are all boring. All right, let's Even go speak to the two that just walked away. I could use the target practice. <laughs> Emnos and Arca. I told you. Not now. Having fun with your new goblin friend. Bet you aren't. And your birdies. And your dogs. All right, let's talk with the goblin. Let me out, you bunch of softies! Ain't sure why you're protecting me. Don't care, neither. It's too late to make friends, warg me. My tribe's coming. They're gonna burn this pretty place for the glory of the Absolute and hang you by your guts. Who is this Absolute you're so fond of? Your god? Goddess. 
We're burning her name across the face of the world, we are. The absolute is gold from the sky, she is. The blessing in the storm and the storm itself. An all-powerful goddess that can't get you out of a cage. Maybe she sent you to help me. And you will, if you want to save your skin. And if the teeth stick a few arrows in us on the way out of here, don't worry. Priestess Gut will patch us up. Got a whole lab set up. Cooks up potions that fix our lads, no matter how much of a beating they take. Could probably stick your head back on if someone was to chop it off. <laughs> Mighty Booyog. A goblin healer. We really are desperate, aren't we? Nice story. Buy it for a copper in a tavern nearby? It's the truth! I swear on your mother's grave. Get me out of here, and I'll tell you where to find her. Deal? Yeah, actions have consequences, Saza. Maybe use this time in the cage to reflect. Suit yourself. Looking forward to seeing what your innards look like. If you say so. You're gonna be sorry! Every last one oh, of so you! There's a fair bit to explore here as well. I think we'll do that next time. So for now, I'm gonna call it here. And we will explore this little prison area. And then we'll head over this way and see what all this commotion is about. Uh, going to the actual druid circle itself but for now thanks for watching hope to see you guys in the next one